Manual vacuum aspiration is a safe, effective, and patient-centered method of uterine evacuation for induced abortion, early pregnancy loss, and post-abortion care. MVA is recommended for uterine evacuation at less than 12 weeks of gestation as an alternative to electronic suction and dilation and curatage. Before you start the MVA procedure, ensure that you have the aspirator and its accessories clean and ready. Make sure that the valve buttons are open, the plunger inserted all the way inside the cylinder, and the collar stop locked in place with the tabs pushed down into the holes in the cylinder. Simultaneously, push buttons down and forward until you feel them locked. Pull the plunger back until the plunger arms snap out and catch on the wide sides of the cylinder base. The plunger arms should be fully extended to the sides and secured over the edges of the cylinder. Check for vacuum retention by releasing the buttons. A rush of the air into the aspirator should be heard indicating that a vacuum was retained. Choose the cannula size that is appropriate to the patient's gestation. For a uterine size that corresponds to four to six weeks since the last menstrual period, you can use cannula size four to seven. For a uterine size seven to nine weeks, you can use cannula size five to 10. For a uterine size nine to 12 weeks, you can use cannula size eight to 12. Clean the cervix with antiseptic solution and, after injection of the cervix with local anesthetic, place the tenaculum at the 12 o'clock position and perform a paracervical block. Pull gently on the tenaculum to straighten the cervical uterine angle and carefully pass the cannula through the oz and advance it to the fundus. If successful, you can begin the aspiration. Test to see if the chosen cannula passes through the oz without additional dilation. A no-touch technique should be observed. Any instrument that enters the uterus should not touch non-sterile surfaces, including the vaginal walls and other parts of the reproductive tract. For this, you can use smaller cannulae or Denistin dilators. By holding the midpoint of the Denistin dilator, use gentle pressure to pass it through the cervical oz, allowing it to rotate through the canal. The tip of the dilator should not reach the fundus. Remove the dilator, flip it, and pass the larger end through the cervical oz. Then, repeat with larger dilators, one at a time, until reaching a level of dilation necessary to pass the appropriate cannula. Once the cannula of the appropriate size passes through the internal oz, you can attach the prepared manual vacuum aspirator. Firmly grasp the cannula at the base with one hand, holding it steady. With the other hand, hold the aspirator by the valve body to attach it. Make sure that the cannula does not move forward into the uterus as you attach the aspirator. Release the buttons of the aspirator to transfer the vacuum through the cannula into the uterus. Blood tissues bubbles should begin to flow through the cannula into the aspirator. Evacuate the content of the uterus by gently rotating the aspirator 180 degrees in each direction while using a gentle in and out motion to cover all of the surfaces of the uterine cavity. If the aspirator fills up to two thirds or if suction fails, depress the valve buttons and disconnect the cannula from the aspirator. Leave the cannula inside the uterus and either replace the aspirator or empty its contents before reattaching it to the cannula. If the cannula becomes clogged, move it toward the cervical oz but not through it. This movement will often unclog the cannula. If this does not work, depress the valve buttons and disconnect the cannula from the aspirator and remove it from the uterus, taking care to prevent contamination.
Alternatively, withdraw the cannula and aspirator together by depressing the buttons. Remove the tissue, which was clogging the cannula, with sterile forceps. Then, re-establish vacuum in the aspirator. Reinsert the cannula using the no-touch technique and continue the procedure if required. Never try to unclog the cannula by pushing the plunger back into the cylinder. The signs that indicate that the uterus is empty are seeing red or pink foam without tissue passing through the cannula, feeling a gritty sensation as the cannula is touching the surface of the uterus, and feeling the uterus contracting around the cannula. When you have established that the uterus is empty, depress the valve buttons and remove the cannula from the uterus. Alternatively, withdraw the cannula and aspirator together without pressing the buttons and disconnect the cannula from the aspirator. You could also leave the cannula inside the uterus until you do the tissue inspection. Empty the contents of the aspirator into an appropriate container by releasing the buttons, squeezing the plunger arms, and pushing the plunger fully in the cylinder. Remove the tenaculum and make sure there is no ongoing bleeding. Help the patient up, escort her to recovery, and reassure her that the procedure is finished. Document the procedure, clearly entering details of the patient, date, time, findings on the tissue examination, details of the procedure, and any difficulties encountered. The MVA technology is designed to increase access to abortion and early pregnancy services beyond the operating room in all healthcare contexts, providing choice, satisfaction, and convenience for women.